Welcome back to the AGS tutorial. <laughs> um, in this video, we're going to uh, continue with the Gabriel Knight style dialogue system. And we left off in the last video at step four. But before we go into step five, I'm going to show you the dialogue that we'll be creating, which I didn't sh ever show you. So I've created a new dialogue, and it's going to have four options uh, new dialogue, cooking, AGS, and exit. Um, and these are the options that are going to be shown in the middle of the dial of the Gabriel Knight style dialogue. It's just like what we did before. The only difference is um, I don't have the say check um, box checked, uh, and the reason is because I don't want in the Gabriel Knight style dialogue. You don't have to do it this way, but in, in Gabriel Knight it did. Um, the options that were presented on the screen weren't the options that the character said. So in other words, if I see new dialogue on the screen, I don't want Sammy to say new dialogue when you click it. I don't want him to say that. That's just the topic of the of the conversation. So I put new dialogue. I say don't say it. Just run whatever's in uh, option number one. Um, same thing with the second one. Don't say cooking. So don't check this box. Just say whatever is here. Um, and then step three and step four. Now I put just an exit option at the very bottom. Um, just to say, you know, exit, and whenever you click that, he's going to go to the, he's going to um, go back to the room that he came from, because remember, we're doing this Gabriel Knight dialogue style dialogue in a different room. So we, whenever we want the exit option to happen, we want him to go back to a different room, which we haven't gotten to yet, but just a little heads up. So okay, so that's my dialogue that I'm going to be creating. So let's go back to um, the room script, and we were on st uh, step number five. Uh, it says add an event for enters room before fade in of the new room and put the following code in that function. So let's go ahead and do that. Go into the uh, new room that we recreated. Um, events enters room before fade in event is here. So click the ellipsis button. That creates a new function for us. I'm going to go back to the top of the um, of the script here. I'm going to copy and paste this code into that function here. Uh, and now I have to get rid of, these are all comments obviously, so I have to get rid of these comments. A quick way to do that is if you hold down the Alt key you can and then click uh, and drag your mouse, you can do a vertical selection like this. So I can vertically select all this text that I don't want and just hit the backspace key and that will get rid of it. Uh, there's actually an error in this code here which I realized after I had uploaded this file, I forgot to go back and change this comment, the comment at the top of the file to reflect um, the chain, the, the correction. It's in this line here and this line down here. Any any line that we're setting, uh, where this one, any line that we're setting this normal view parameter of the of the of the character object, we can't. AGS won't let us do that. Um, in fact, if we try to run the game now, we'll get an error here, and it tells us down here it says on line 196, property normal view is read only. So this is line 196, what it's talking about. So what we have to do is instead of instead of doing it this way, player.normalView equals player.getProperty, we just need to say player.changeView. That's the way to change the character's view, which is really what we're trying to do here. Um, this player.getProperty here, getProperty is the way that you get the custom properties that we talked about in the last video. So if you remember, we created a custom property called DialogView. Um, and the way that you retrieve that property within the script is you just say the character's name or the object name or whatever um, that has the property you want dot and then get property and then you pass it in double quotation marks here you pass it the the name of the the property that you said in this case it was dialog view remember we had set nickname and dialog view or whatever so in this case we have dialog view we want to get so we just do it this way get property dialog view and that will return in this case that number that we set for dialog view for that character Notice too that I'm using player here. This is the first time we've talked about the player uh, uh, variable here. This is just another way of saying the main player character. So it's just another way in this in in our case of saying C Sammy. It's ex identical in this game. Uh, but the reason I use player um, is for one thing, if you ever change player characters in your game, you don't have to go back and change the code. Um, if you rename your character, or if if for some reason you, in the middle of your game you change what is the main character. Maybe uh, maybe Donatello becomes the main character at some point in the game or something like that. You don't have to change the code this way. Um, and another way too is I didn't necessarily know what 
your character is going to be called so I wanted to say player uh, that way it'll be um, generic so I changed this change view here I'm going to go down here to this normal view the same way and I'm going to change it um, the same way all this is doing here is this is setting up the views it's, it's changing the character, it's setting up their dialogue view of the player character, it's positioning them in the correct place. Um, the X location is fine the way it is, the Y location you want to set this number to the height of your, of your dialogue portrait, of this dialogue view here. Um, you want to set it to about the, the right height of that dialogue, of that character's dialogue portrait. Um, 100 will probably work, that's about halfway down the screen assuming you're using a 320 by 200 resolution. So you can set that to about 100 and see how that works uh, for player.y there. Everything else should work fine the way it is. So, um, so that's that step done. Let's go back up to the top and look at the next step. Step number six here, add an event for leaves room of the new room and put the following in that function. So let's copy this, copy, and go back to the room and make our event for leaves room, which is what it said to do. I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to do my uh, little alt trick, alt and vertically select. Delete that uh, stuff that I don't want. Let me delete one more space because I'm... So I delete all that stuff. Now here again I have normal view which is an error. I need to change that to change view just like we did in the last function. So there's one here and there's also one here. Just change it exactly like I'm doing and you should be fine if you're following along. And then that should be fine. And all we're doing here whenever the player leaves the room, we're just setting everything back. Here we changed everything to what it should be for the normal view or for the dialogue room. And now we're setting it back to what it was before. We want to set his view, the character's view back to their normal view again. We want to set, change their X and Y location back to where they were in the previous room. Um, and then we want to move that character, that, that secondary character back to wherever he uh, was before. So that's what we're doing there. And then we're on step seven. Step seven says uh, add an event for enters room after fade in of the new room and put the following in that function. And there's only one line here that we need to put there. So let me copy that. And this actually starts the dialogue. So later on we're going to have a current, we set up that current dialogue uh, global variable which we're going to, um, as the last step here uh, in, our, in our, well let me go back and show you what I'm talking about. The last step here which we haven't gotten to yet tells us to set this current dialogue to whatever dialogue we want to start. Well this is, where, this is the code that actually starts that dialogue. So go back down in the enters room after fade in function, paste that dialogue start. So all, all this is saying is saying start the dialogue that has the same number as the as this current dialogue variable. So if we set that current dialogue variable to 3, this will start dialogue 3. If we set it to 0, it'll start dialogue 0, etc. So that should be what we need to do there. So we're done with um, we're done all the way up to um, to this. Now I will go up to step 8 and then I'm going to stop in this video. Step number 8 says each dialogue should have an exit option with the following script code. Um, and this looks like the, the, the um, dialogue script here. So um, at 7, assuming that 7 is your exit option, you should put, this is what I'm getting at here, you should put the player.changeRoom to player.previousRoom before you do the stop. So let's copy this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I go back to that uh, dialogue that I had created earlier that I just showed you. So I have these four options here. The last one should be the exit, which it is, and that's what it just told me to do. But it said to make sure that on this last one, I put this line before the stop. This should actually be a stop because it's the last option. Um, so I want to make sure I remember to indent. I want to say player dot change room, player dot previous room. So in other words, change make the player go back to the room that he was just in. Um, in effect, taking him back into the game again from from uh, leaving the dialogue room. And that's step 8 finished. So now uh, we're on step 9 and this is going to be in the next video where I import this module. This is another uh, piece of code that you're going to have to download and I'll put the link uh, in the next video uh, where to get this um, this module from. And you're going to import this module into your um, game and I'll show you how to do that in the next video.
So uh, join us in the next video, guys. Thanks.